Hey everybody, Hunter Fisher, Trapper, Trader, Guide, Scout, and Interpreter, and just a country cook. Steve Hall here in Nashville, Tennessee, along with Pretty Miss Sheila, running that camera. Hi, Sheila. Hi. Today we're going to make a Brooks Burger. I think that's what it's called. It's a burger stand, kind of like an old drive-in like you used to see years ago. It's just a block building. You don't eat inside. You sit outside at some picnic tables and benches. And it's in Charlotte, North Carolina. It's run by the Brooks Brothers, twin brothers. They're full-grown men, but their dad created the recipe that made this burger so famous. It's the chili that goes on top of a burger with mustard and onions and cheese. It's even topped with an egg, if you can believe that. We're going to do all that today. But first, we got to try to do this chili. Now, the only way you're going to get the true taste of this burger is go to Charlotte, North Carolina and go to that Brooks burger stand down there and get one of theirs because he spent, and I'm talking about the twin brother's father, spent not only weeks and months but years perfecting that chili that goes on that burger. We're going to try to get kind of close to a delicious burger chili and I think we can get close but of course we won't do what they do. But come on over, let's get started in this pot that Sheila bought me up there in uh, Pigeon Forge at Dollywood. I'll tell you about that in a second as soon as you come on over. Let's get started on our hamburger chili. All right, let's get started on our burger chili and look what I've got. Thank you, Sheila. You're welcome. Sheila and her real good friend Linda Warren, they went up to Dollywood, stayed at that big hotel, went to Dollywood, went shopping, and they went by the Lodge Outlet store and got me this neat little, I'm not really sure what it is, it's like a Dutch oven on the bottom half with a frying pan handle and like a frying pan on the top with a rim that actually sits right in there so you can bake and stuff in it. I'll do that on another recipe, but thank you Sheila. And in the bottom half of this neat little bean pot slash Dutch oven slash chili maker, it's just wonderful. I got some 80-20 burger, one pound. Now a lot of these hamburger chili recipes start out with one and a half pounds of burger. Well, who wants to go to the store and buy a pound and a half of burger? So I got one pound in here and I'm going to turn this thing on and brown it up. And then we're going to drain it and get rid of whatever fat's left. And it doesn't really produce a lot because it's 80-20 is pretty lean. But we will dump off what it does produce. And in here, as it's browning up, I'm going to put in a half an onion. Now I'm using sweet onions today and I'm almost, you know, locked in with sweet Vidalia onions, and this is about a half an onion in here. But you can use red onion in this particular chili recipe if you like. Of course, you can use any onion you want. I'm just saying I think it would be great if you used a sweet onion or a red onion. All right, let me get this browned up a little bit, and I'll be back with you. All right, our burger's browned up nice. We got a little juice down in there, so we're going to go ahead and drain it through our colander. Go ahead and turn this thing off here. Let me get this drained and back in the pot. And we'll be back with you to show you all the neat goodies we're going to put in this burger. See you in a bit. Alright, I got our burger back in the pot. Got it on medium-high heat for right now. I didn't think we'd get that much juice off of there, but we got about a quarter of a cup of oil off of that burger so it was worth draining it. Now it's time for our goodies. We're going to put in a half a cup of ketchup. I use Hunt's. You can use any brand you want but I just love Hunt's ketchup. They don't sponsor my show but I love their products. Then we're also going to put in a tablespoon of mustard. Kind of like we're going to put this on a hamburger, isn't it? It does. <laughs> Sheila, I can't thank you enough for this pot. I am just so thrilled with this thing. Well, I'm glad you <laughs> In fact, I'm going to turn this down to medium because it's kind of getting away on me. We're going to put in a tablespoon, kind of a loose heaping tablespoon of brown sugar or one tablespoon if you really packed it in there, but a little extra of that don't hurt because I like it sweet. We're going to put in one tablespoon of garlic, minced garlic, and one tablespoon 
of chili powder. There's so many recipes out there that use one or one and a half pounds and they put in two tablespoons of chili powder. And I just think that that is too much. It gets really overbearing if you know what I'm talking about. Now we're going to put in a quarter of a teaspoon of salt, a quarter of a teaspoon of pepper, a quarter of a teaspoon of red pepper flakes. So oh yeah, they got to go in there. A quarter of a teaspoon of onion powder. Make sure you don't use gar onion salt. Use I always make sure when I use garlic powder or onion powder that I tell everybody don't use the salts. Make sure you use the other stuff. Now this has got a quarter of a teaspoon of cumin and a quarter of a teaspoon of oregano. And that's all you need is those goodies. And I'll list all that underneath there. Well, that's all you need plus a little pat of butter. Never hurts to chuck a little bit of butter in there. I thought I could get away and not show it to anybody, but I thought maybe I better. Now, we're going to mix this up. And we're going to need some liquid so we can simmer this for about a half hour and reduce it down to a nice, thick, hamburger chili. Let me get this mixed up first. Beautiful thing. And here is what we're going to use. Now so many of the recipes out there that I kind of poke around and look at them, they use water and then they cook it back down again. And I think if you're going to put anything in there, put in some flavor. So I'm using beef consomme. It comes in a little can like this. Can you see that, Sheila? It's kind of pouring out the back side because I got it tilted. But beef consomme, and all it is is just concentrated beef broth. We're going to put the whole can in there. Seems like a lot, but trust me on this. It's going to disappear. And you can find this over in the soup section. You know where you find Campbell's soup, any kind of you know, chicken and stars and all that kind of stuff. But looks like a lot of liquid. But wait till I show you this in about 30 minutes. Now, I get a lot of people that ask me what kind of a cooktop do I use here. This is a New Wave 2 and you can find them on Amazon. This is an older model. I think I paid like $69 or something. Some of the newer ones are like a hundred and some bucks. I don't know why, but if you kind of snoop around you can find one. New Wave and then the number 2. Let me move it so you can see that. Can you see New Wave 2 under there, Sheila? Barely. Alright, anyway, <laughs> New Wave 2 and here's the thing, these little temperature gauges on these induction cooktops, they kind of lie to you. So here's what I found out when I made this chili the other day. If I put it on medium, it says 275. If I put it on medium low, it says 175. So I put it on medium and then I hit the minus and I walked it down to 200. I don't know what it is in the pot, but if that says 200 on this induction cooktop, this will just bubble perfect. So that's where I got it. I might even kick it up to high until it's really starting to bubble here. And then I'll reduce it to 200. Wow, that didn't take long. Sheila only had the camera turned off about a minute. So we're going to put this down to that 200 degree setting. Stir it just a little bit. And we're going to simmer this uncovered because we want that liquid to evaporate and this chili get thicker and thicker and thicker. I'm going to stir this about every five to ten minutes and we'll see you guys in a half hour. And you won't believe how this stuff disappears but the flavor stays in there. We'll see you in about 30 minutes. You know it's only been five minutes but I had Sheila turn the camera back on because look how perfect that simmers on that 200 setting. Then I just stir it every now and then and you wait, it's already starting to thicken. See and when I get done stirring it, just starts to bubble and it kicks in and out like it. it'll kind of bubble a little quicker then a little slower. See a little quicker and then it slows down. So it must be kind of going through a cycle at that temperature setting. But that looks just perfect. We'll see you in another 25 minutes or so. Would you look at this at 15 minutes? I'm going to bring it down 10 more degrees. And look how thick this chili is getting. Where did all that beef consomme go to? 
And looky here, you don't think that won't pile up on a hamburger nice? I'm going to give this about 15 more minutes on a 190 setting. Just kind of slow it down a little bit. Stay close to this the last 15 minutes. And then we'll check it in about 15. We'll see you then. Sheila, what do you think? That looks great. It does look great. It's been 30 minutes and look at this. Don't you think that won't prop itself up on top of burger? It is just perfect. And that whole can of beef consomme that all disappeared. And I'll tell you, this is chili you can eat with a fork. I've already had a little sample. Mm. Wow. Fantastic. It's time to make the burgers. I'm going to move this to the side. We'll heat it up again later. But it's done. Let's get the griddle out here and get our burgers going. All right, we got everything set up here. I'm going to spray this griddle down a little bit. Time to start our burgers. After we look for 20 minutes for that cord, you've never done that, have you? Well, we found it. It was laying right in plain sight under something. But thank you, Sheila, for helping me set all this up. You're welcome. It's time to start our burgers. And I'm going to have some fun with my new toys. I got a couple of burger presses or bacon presses or griddle presses, whatever you want to call them. But they're made by Lodge Manufacturing, cast iron. That's going to keep them burgers nice and flat. And when we slap that American cheese on, because that's all them Brooks burgers have on theirs is American cheese. I'm going to use these little domes that I bought on Amazon so I can throw a little water on there, cap it over, it'll help melt that cheese. But before we go any further, it's time to take a pause and say thank you to Jeb and Jen from Connecticut. They're viewers of our cooking channel. Remember, about four days ago was Halloween. They sent us a picture of a pumpkin that they carved. It's their 2018 pumpkin. I guess they do a different one with a different theme every year. But look at this. Look at this pumpkin. It's a shotgun red pumpkin. But, but, uh, yeah, man, that looks just like me. I can't believe it. That's fabtabulous, you guys. That's right, Red. A shotgun red pumpkin. You guys, that is the coolest picture anybody has ever sent us. That is really cool. And by the way, it's also Jen's birthday. Help me, Sheila. Happy birthday, dear Jen. Happy birthday to you. From all of us here at Cooking with Shotgun Red, which would be me and Sheila, we want to say happy birthday. Come on over. Let's get started on these burgers. That is cool. Are these burgers perfect or what? I made these. This is not store-bought. I smashed out a big flat of burger, then I took one of them bowls over there and went around and made it. And then I set it in the refrigerator overnight with some pepper, onion powder, and garlic powder, but no salt because I didn't want it to pull the moisture out of the burgers. And they're just kind of stiffened up nice by sitting in the refrigerator. So what I'm going to do here is now I am going to hit them with the salt. Just a little sprinkle of salt on both sides. Then I'm going to drop them down on our griddle here. And I'm not going to cover it with that grill press just yet. I'm going to let these start and get the bottom portion. I just now turned the griddle on, so it'll take a second to get caught up with our camera work here. Once they get nice and golden brown on the bottom, I'll turn them over. Then I'll put that press on there. I let these sizzle just for about a minute. I'm going to turn it over. I just wanted to get a little brown on the bottom. Then... I'm actually going to take this press, give it a little spray of cooking spray on the bottom, set it on there. Same thing with the other one. Well, got to move him over a little bit. There we go. You can also kind of smash down on these to make them burgers more of a restaurant style flat burger. I'm going to let these fry for about a minute and I'm going to turn them again. See you in a second. All right, it's been about two minutes here. Oh yeah, that's perfect. I love this little burger press made by Lodge because it keeps these burgers from sucking up into a hockey puck. I hate that. I see these famous chefs and they'll do a burger and they start out with it that big around and that thick and then it puffs up even though they punch a hole in the middle with their thumb which to me does virtually nothing. And then by the time they get done stacking everything, they got to put a toothpick in it this long, and then they serve it to you. Other than me, who has a mouth that big? So they slice it with a knife. 
Well, if I wanted to do that, I would just put it between two pieces of bread and cut it. I want a flat burger. That's just me. But let me give this about a minute and a half or two minutes on this side, and we'll turn it again. Spend a couple of minutes on this side. Let me move a little of this grease off to the side, even though this is 80-20 burger. See, even though it's got that press on it, still wants to pull up a little bit. But without it, it would be really round and tall, and I want it flat. What kind of burger do you like, Sheila? Flat. Okay, that's what I thought. That's too funny. Me too. We're going to turn these a couple of times because, as you know, if you're cooking a steak, you can cook it to 130 degrees, nice and medium rare. But if it's ground beef, because the outside bacteria has been ground into the inside of the meat, it's got to be cooked to 160 degrees. I have a tough time getting a little temperature probe in there, even though I got one. So I just cook it until I know for sure it's done all the way through. See you in another second, and we'll get this thing ready for our cheese. <laughs> I did a good three minutes on this side, so I know they're done. Now it's time to have a little fun here. Move our little burger presses over here. And down there at Brooks, they use American cheese only. Now you can use any cheese you want, but for this recipe, I want to stay traditional to their recipe. Now I got these little lids and I've been waiting to use these. I'm going to put a little splash of water, just about a teaspoon, under each one of these lids and see if they'll melt that cheese in a hurry. Let's take a peek. Yes, indeedy. Fantastic. We got to make one more ingredient for their burger. Let me clean off this griddle. And we'll go to the next step. All right, push this grease off to the side. Wipe this griddle down just a little bit here. Hit it with some more spray. And here's their other secret ingredient to their hamburger. Now this is where Sheila and I part ways. Because we're going to cook this and leave the yolk soft. And we're going to put that on top of the burger. So when you push the bun down, the yolk breaks and runs down through the chili. Are you with me so far? Now those Lodge Burger Presses, they got a little curly Q handle, so they never get hot. But these little teeny lids here, they, ooh yeah, perfect. The white is done, but the yolk is still soft. Like I said, this is where Sheila and I go separate ways. We got that ready. Now let's build... This, what they call, is the greatest burger in the world from up there in Charlotte, North Carolina. Let's get started. Well, we reheated our chili, so we're ready to build these burgers. Now, they don't grill their burger, but I did put a little butter on the bottom of each one of these because my Uncle Bob taught me years ago, if you're doing Sloppy Joe's or any kind of a greasy burger or anything, butter the bottom bun. It won't soak through. And this chili is really delicious. But if you want the real deal, which was created over 40 years ago at Brooks in Charlotte, North Carolina, you're going to have to go to their drive-in because their dad created that recipe years and years ago. But here's what they do. They put a burger on top of the bun. Then I'm going to squeeze a little bit of this mustard off to the side to make sure we don't get water. There we go. A little bit of mustard on here is what they put on. Then, after they smear the mustard on top of there, they put on diced onions. Now, I usually use sliced onions, but I'm staying true to their recipe. And I'm going with the diced onions on top of there. These are not fried, they're just raw diced up onions. Of course, I use sweet by days because I like sweet onions. Then, on top of that, they put their world famous chili. The only way to get it is to go to their restaurant, their neat little drive-in there in Charlotte, North Carolina. Oh, man. We did ourselves proud, though. We got a good-looking product here. And they put that 
on next. And I got to be true to you. I haven't tasted their burger yet, but I'm going over and get me one. Then they slide on an egg on top of that that has the yolk. In fact, I'm going to see if I can. Oh, yeah, there it is. It broke, see? Break that yolk and put that lid on top. And it's supposed to look like this, folks. Sheila, grab a close-up of this. Man, oh man, let me see if I can turn this towards the camera. Can you see that, Sheila? I can. When the onions and chili and that yolk run out the side of the burger, that's what makes them line up there in Charlotte, North Carolina at that restaurant. Let me grab a knife over here. Slice this thing in half. And give it a taste test. I'm not sure if they call this the Brooks Burger, but it is at that Brooks Drive-In in Charlotte, North Carolina. I got a bigger platter here so we could open these up and you could see that yolk and stuff running down in there. Their chili is the star of the show. I'm going to take these eggs here and cook them all the way through for Sheila because she won't eat one with the yolk running down through there. <laughs> that just goes without saying, but I got to try this burger. Wow. Mmm. Mmm. We might have to stop tape, but if not, I'm going to talk with my mouth full. That is delicious. Wow, what a concept. A cheeseburger with mustard on it, then raw onions, then chili, then a fried egg, but sunny side up so the yolk will break and run down through everything. That, I think, is too cool. Give it a try. Better yet, stop into their drive-in and order one. You won't be disappointed if you can get in line. I hope you enjoyed this recipe, and we really hope you subscribe to our channel. Little Shotgun Red's face will pop up over here in a little bit. When it does, just click on it. Make sure you click on that bell next to subscribe. Then you'll be notified every time we come out with a new recipe. My mouth is still watering. That is really good. You sure you don't want one with some soft yolk, Sheila? Okay, that's what I thought. We'll put some other recipes over here that we hope you enjoy. And is this the most delicious Brooks burger you ever ate from Charlotte, North Carolina? If it ain't, it ought to be. Now, all the ingredients will be right underneath the video, so you never have to go to a website to get any of our ingredients. But if you are out snooping around, check out ShotgunRed.com. Our fish breading is now on the market. And I got to thinking about something earlier when we showed you that picture of that pumpkin and it was Jen's birthday. I had one bun left, didn't have a cake, couldn't find any birthday candles except for this one that says eight, number eight. So Jen, you're gonna have to be 18. I know you're probably not eight if you're married to Jeb, but you gotta be 18 or 28 or 38 or 48 or 58. I won't go any higher than that, but Happy birthday, dear Jan. Happy birthday to you. We'll see you next time right here on Cooking with Shotgun Red. Make a wish. Are you making a wish? Don't tell anybody what it is. Make the wish. Here we go. All right, who turned out the lights? Wait a minute. There's a nightlight right there, a pumpkin that looks like me.